Christian here with Forward Momentum. Thanks for joining me today. I've got some exciting parts that are ready to go into the Lexus GS400. I want to walk through those parts with you. I'm also going to link all of those parts in the description below. So if you want to know about part numbers or what exactly I installed on this vehicle, they'll all be listed in the description. But today, I'm going to go over the AEM AFR, the new X series, and I'm going to show you the parts that are needed to install that into your vehicle. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any future episodes. I'm going to be installing a lot of parts coming up. I'm going to be tuning the vehicle. We've got some exciting episodes coming so you don't want to miss them. Included inside the kit is an instruction manual, a card, a sticker, and a bag with some connections and also if you want to weld in a bung, it comes with the mild steel weld in bung. So it's a 52 millimeter gauge, kind of a standard deal. This actually is a gauge pod that does not come with it, but it was only $8 on Amazon and I'll link that in the description below. It's universal, but it's not a perfect fit. So you're gonna have to use a heat gun to mold it to your pillar. Here's some wiring to actually power the gauge. This wiring here goes to the sensor, the heated sensor itself. And that sensor will be mounted into the exhaust system. I went with a AEM no weld O2 sensor mount. So we'll be getting into that install. But that's it, that's what you need to install this properly. This is what it's going to look like once I use the heat gun and get it properly mounted. It's gonna look something like that. Pop off this door sill thing. That's pretty easy, you just kinda pull, up, pull on it and it'll pop out and then you remove that and then these, these are, uh, latched into this bra these brass fittings right here. Those are really easy to get out as well. And then you've got to bend this carpet pretty excessively and pull on it. So now I have access underneath. So that is the Bank 1 Sensor 2 grommet. And that's what we need to run our wiring to our new a AEM AFR O2 sensor. Here's how I'm holding the carpeting out of the way. Just uh, a bungee cord. I very carefully jabbed a screwdriver through the grommet and avoided that wiring. You gotta be really careful. You don't wanna go around the grommet because you don't want the wiring riding on a sharp edge of the unibody. Hopefully you can see that screwdriver coming through there. That's where the wiring to the new O2 sensor is going to run. This is what you want to end up with here. See how it's coming through the grommet. So now I can pull this whole thing through and then I'm going to reseat the grommet into the car. So I'm going to need two hands, but I just wanted you to see what it looks like. You just got to make a little slit and an opening and then you'll be able to pull the wiring through that and then reseat it. Here's all the wiring pulled through. And the grommet is not, I haven't seated it yet, but that's what it looks like. So this connector right here will go up to the AEM gauge itself and plug into the back of it. So we have plenty, plenty of wiring to make it up here to the pillar. We got the grommet seated properly into the body of the vehicle. And now I need to coil and stow this wiring and run it up to the gauge. Make sure you have enough cable run so that it'll reach the gauge once it's up here. That's about how much I needed. Okay, now I'm going to run the O2 sensor wiring and I'm going to make sure that I have enough slack. I'm going to do the same thing I did on the other wire and I'm going to tuck it in here. This is what it should look like test fit. Here's the pod and I know that this slip for sure needs to come down 
in order to snap into the pillar. So I'm going to take a heat gun and try to manipulate this down. See if it becomes pliable. So I wedged it in here and I'm going to heat it up and start to bend it. This is my test fit. I don't know if you can see that gap. There's a gap there, so I'm going to keep on heating it up and bending it until it tucks up under there. Or it's not perfect. The gauge pod definitely needs some working and contouring, but you can see that I heated it up in here very carefully and I used this round side of a wrench and I pushed gently right up in here and then I shoved it down in there as far as I could get it so it's actually resting on the dash which is not what I wanted I wanted it raised up a little bit but I didn't have to drill any holes or anything that's the cool part of this this is a screw up right here but it's hard to see unless you're sitting down in the vehicle and the doors open you can see I messed that up but from right here from what I'll call the three foot level it, it looks pretty good so I'm pretty happy with it now let's continue with the install. Everything, by the way, is plugged into here. Now I just need to deal with the wiring that goes down to the sensor, to the ignition switch, and to the ground. You're gonna have to run a five amp inline fuse to the AEM gauge per their instructions. So I'm gonna go ahead and solder up a connection. And I'm gonna run it off a five amp ignition fuse as my power source, it's switched. So that should work out pretty well. Anyone else ever start out on a simple job and end up with just a mess of stuff everywhere? I mean, this install is really not that complicated, but... <laughs> oh goodness, I'm gonna get this all cleaned up now. Alright guys, it's time to get this no weld bung installed into the exhaust system on this GS400. Now I'm going to tell you, the best place for an AFR sensor is in front of the catalytic converter. That gives you the fastest response and it gives you the most accurate reading. However, on the GS300, GS400, probably GS430, probably LS430, LS460, all those vehicles, there is absolutely no room to put a bung in. Uh, in front of the catalytic converter or upstream. This is for the record. I called AEM and I said, hey, I got no room to put this thing in. Can I put it after the catalytic converter? And the answer from AEM was, yes, you can. The readings will be off slightly. So if anything, it's going to report back a more lean condition than you actually have. Therefore, you can tune in more fuel and you'll be running a little bit safer. I'm gonna show you where I'm gonna put it. It's gonna be very close to the bank one sensor two location, which would be downstream of the catalytic converter. All right, let's take a look. So you really want it to be where that is located right there. What I'm gonna do is, this is a catalytic converter right here. I'm gonna install it probably right there just after that bank, two, or bank one sensor two. So I'm going to install it on the other side. You can see my connector dangle in there. That's from uh, the install I did earlier. Okay, real quick, here are the instructions. It's just talking about the angle. Of course, you, for moisture purposes, you want to make sure that it's at a greater than 10 degree angle. This is talking about, they, they include some crazy tape, looks like this, that you're going to wrap around the pipe once it's cleaned off. Okay, I'm going to test fit this thing on here. So that's the idea. And I want the hardware to be up because if it's down, it has a good chance of getting snagged on something on the road or wherever you might be. I just realized I'm going to need a right angle drill in order to put a hole in this thing properly. So I'm going to have to go pick up a drill. I had to run to Harbor Freight, pick up one of these close quarter drills. It's a quartered one, 30 bucks with a 20% off coupon out the door.
This is the only spot that I could find, guys, where that circle is, is where I'm going to drill the hole. There's the hole. It's real rough, so I'm gonna file it and then I'm gonna take my shot back and I'm gonna vacuum out the hole to make sure I get all the shavings out of there. Once you get the hole the right size, you can take a ball peen hammer and you can set it up there like this and just give it a couple taps. That should kind of help curl it in. Now you want to clean up all the way around this pipe. I'm going to use this wire brush here to kind of clean it up. This is the tricky part because this is a one-time use adhesive. So you gotta be you gotta get this right the first time. And you gotta get it right over the hole and then apply pressure. Okay, so what I am doing here is I'm this is the next piece. I don't have the adhesive out yet. And I'm touching it against the far side of this other piece and I'm going to wrap it around and then I'm going to mark it so I can cut it. All right, here goes nothing. I'm doing a lot of this by feel here. Manipulate this thing by pulling it. There we go. All right, guys, it's it's on there. That's gonna work. Now I just need to shut up the clamp system. I had to put a clamp on this thing in order to squeeze it enough so I could get the threads through right here. This is how tricky this is. <laughs> I am upside down under my car and I'm just trying to get this thing started. I'm kind of going back and forth, alternating. And there are lock washers on the before the nuts on here. They're really, it should hold, but you don't want it to be that loose. All right, guys, switched over to a wrench, because as you can see, these threads start sticking out quite a bit. And uh, I didn't want to put a deep socket on there, just, but figure out a way to tighten it down. I think that's pretty good. you do is you take your ratchet and I did cover this on my own changing the O2 sensors video okay and this is how you torque it down the connection has been made now obviously you don't want this resting on hot exhaust and you don't want this resting on the trans pan so I'm gonna have to get a little bit creative here to run this you don't want to have too much of a bend radius right here what I did was I put this protective wire covering on everything and I got it up and away from the exhaust and fastened it appropriately in here. I also put some protection on right here and it runs right up into that grommet. There it is. I guess this is the moment of truth. I'll fire her up.
Well, I got to say, installing this AEM AFR into this vehicle was a little harder than I expected. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being a complete engine rebuild, I'd label this one a 5. It wasn't difficult in that understanding components and understanding how things work. It was more difficult in tediousness of installation and placement of parts. You're not going to find a location upstream of your catalytic converter. There's just no way. So that being said, you need to put that bung after the catalytic converter. And you saw in the video where I placed my no weld bung from AEM. If you don't have access to a welder, that is a great option. And so far so good. Well, that's it. Installation complete. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next episode. Cruising some back roads. AFRs hanging out in the low to mid 14s. Oh, there's a big trailer. Don't want to hit that. Still getting a feel for this thing. Dang, dualies. Uh, when you let off on this, watch how it goes blank. See? That's because there's no longer fuel. This is a good spot to kind of get onto the freeway. I'm just gonna ease into it. See where my 